like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7, an all new channel focusing on the history of Major League Baseball. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. The Marriott is one of the most prominent hotel chains throughout the United States, with 322 Marriott hotels scattered around the country and over 5,700 Marriott group hotels and resorts locations when you factor in all of Marriott's 30 some odd brands. Now, if you were to take a guess as to what state boasts the most Marriott locations across all of its brands, if you said Texas, then congratulations. You're right. There are a whopping 601 Marriott locations deep in the heart of Texas alone, meaning that roughly one out of every 10 Marriott locations is in Texas. For many people, Marriott is their go-to hotel, and for more than 60 years has been a trusted hotel chain. Odds are, if you're watching this video, whether you realize it or not, you've likely stayed at a Marriott, or a hotel owned by Marriott, at some point in your life. And this holds especially true if you've traveled and stayed at a hotel in Texas, since the Lone Star State seems to be the place where Marriott does most of its business. Which is what makes this story all the more bizarre. Because in 1977, Marriott got into a giant, heated feud with the University of Texas football team. In 1977, this team right here, the Texas Longhorns, in no uncertain terms, basically declared war on Marriott. I mean, I'm not even sure I need to say anything else. Just uttering that sentence feels like a bad game of Mad Libs. However, that's exactly what happened as Texas was getting ready for the Cotton Bowl, when Marriott screwed the Longhorns over so badly that Texas vowed never to stay at another Marriott ever again. Because this is the story behind the bizarre drama between the Texas Longhorns and the Marriott. Before I talk about the actual controversy at hand, and why Texas and the Marriott were even feuding in the first place, we need some context to understand how good Texas was this season, and what they were looking to do with the Marriott in particular. The year is 1977, and in their first season with Fred Akers as the head coach following 20 years of guidance under Daryl Royal, who was still the AD by this point, they were picking up right where they left off, and were having one of their best seasons in program history. By the end of the 1977 regular season, the Longhorns were not just the number one team in the country according to the AP poll, and just about every metric out there, but they were the only undefeated team in Division I. And I mean, it helped just a little bit that they had one of the greatest running backs in the history of the sport on their team as while there were many reasons why the Longhorns were dominant that year and had the fourth highest scoring offense in all of Division I, the main reason was the incredible play of Earl Campbell, who became the first player in Texas history to win the Heisman, and to this day, is one of just two players in program history to do this, alongside Ricky Williams in 1998. I mean, what more is there to say about Campbell that hasn't been said already? He ended the year with over 1,700 rushing yards and 18 rushing touchdowns on 6.5 yards per carry, finishing first in the entire NCAA in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and yards from scrimmage, as well as finishing first in the Southwest Conference in yards per carry. There's a reason he was a consensus All-American selection to go along with that. And with Campbell, along with a dominant defensive unit, Texas was unstoppable. In 1977, they averaged 36.8 points per game, and also finished just outside the top 15 in points allowed by allowing just 12.7 points per game. They opened the season against Boston College and Virginia by outscoring them 112 to nothing. Then they scored 72 against Rice, and then they kept that gravy train going the whole way through, including four wins against ranked opponents with one of them being a shutout 26-0 victory against the number 14 ranked Texas Tech team, and a convincing 57-28 victory on the road at College Station against the number 12 ranked Texas A&M team. With their number one ranking and with their Southwest Conference title, it was clear that the Longhorns were not just going to be going bowling, but were going to be going to the Cotton Bowl, which is what every Southwest Conference school dreams of, 
And not only that, but they were going to go into that game with aspirations of a national championship for the fourth time ever. And for the first time since 1970, when they finished number one in the coaches poll and claimed a title. Now, it was time to prepare for this bowl game. And one of the first things from a logistical standpoint that teams have to think about when going to a bowl game is the accommodation situation. Where are you going to stay? You want to stay somewhere that's high quality, that has good accommodations, that's close enough to everything football related, but at the same time, not in a spot where your players can get into any trouble, and ideally, that's relatively familiar to you, so you're not guessing. A lot of what happened with Jerry Glanville and the Atlanta Falcons when they tried making hotel accommodations and they realized once they got there that the hotel was way too spread out to be good for what they were trying to accomplish. You can learn more about that debacle on my pro football channel by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And for Texas, they knew exactly the place that they had in mind because the Longhorns wanted to stay at the Marriott. It made complete sense as to why the Longhorns wanted to stay at the Marriott. The Marriott was familiar territory to them. Remember, Texas played Oklahoma every year at the Cotton Bowl, and every time that the Longhorns played the Sooners, they stayed at the Marriott. Plus, whenever Texas played SMU, which was every other year, because SMU also played at the Cotton Bowl, Texas would stay at the Marriott. In other words, every time the Longhorns had to play a game at the Cotton Bowl, no matter the opponent, they would stay at that establishment. Plus, the Marriott absolutely loved Texas and welcomed them with open arms every time the Longhorns stayed there. Not once was there any problem between the hotel and Texas. The hotel treated Texas like valued guests, to the point where after every single game that the Longhorns won in 1977, a representative from the Marriott called up Texas to congratulate them on the victory, hoping that they would choose to stay at the Marriott when they got in buddy to the Cotton Bowl and won the Southwest Conference. And now that the time had come, it seemed obvious where the Longhorns were going to stay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So Texas officials called up the Marriott and were ready to book rooms. And the Marriott's response? Yeah, we can't do that. Notre Dame is staying here. Because Notre Dame, the number five team in the country, and the team that Texas was going to be facing as their final obstacle to winning a championship, already booked the hotel. Understandably, Texas was confused at first, and wondered what the heck happened, since this came out of nowhere. And in the end, this was a matter of risk management for the Marriott. Notre Dame got the bid to the Cotton Bowl long before Texas did. Notre Dame, as an independent, could have taken the Cotton Bowl invitation anytime they wanted to once invitations could start being handed out, and Notre Dame accepted that invite in the middle of November. Texas, on the other hand, had to win the Southwest Conference in order to get the bid, and at the time that Notre Dame accepted the bid, there were still two games left for the Longhorns to play. Now, one of these games was at home against Baylor, who wasn't any good and ended the season with a losing record, so I don't think officials from the Marriott were too concerned about that. But the final one was that game at College Station against a ranked Texas A&M team, as the Aggies were ranked all season, and had a top 10 win under their belt already when they went on the road and defeated Texas Tech. If Texas lost that game, then they wouldn't get the Cotton Bowl spot, and instead, it would go to Texas A&M. Which meant that for the Marriott, they had two options once nerding toward the hotel, and decided that this was the spot that they wanted to stay at. Option one was to allow Nerding to stay there, and ensure that the Marriott would be occupied no matter what. Option two was to reject the Fighting Irish and say, thanks for being interested, but we're holding this for Texas. But that option is super risky, because if Texas lost to Texas A&M and didn't get the Cotton Bowl invite, now, You've got no one staying at your hotel anymore. It was a tough situation, and the Marriott decided to take the guaranteed occupancy and the guaranteed team staying there, leaving Texas, surprisingly, out in the dust. As David Pease, the director of marketing for Marriott, 
said on this, It was one of the toughest decisions we have ever had to make. We knew that Texas would stay here if it won the Southwest Conference and beat Texas A&M. But A&M, who would have made the Cotton Bowl if they won, had stayed at the downtown Hilden for the past three years. We decided to go ahead and accept Notre Dame rather than face the possibility of having no team at all. And to say that Texas was furious about this would be a massive understatement. Because Texas basically waged war against the Marriott and called them backstabbers and traitors and liars. As head coach Fred Akers said on this, I may as well talk about it. I'm upset about it. That's the last time the Marriott will see us. Akers said that he didn't have a backup hotel in mind, saying, I didn't really consider staying anywhere else. Before this, the Marriott was always out of breath trying to get us to stay there, and added on where he would stay for the Cotton Bowl, maybe this time, we can find a nice hotel. The Marriott felt terrible about this, and said that even though this particular Marriott was booked for Notre Dame, that not only would they offer lodging at a different Marriott in Dallas near the stadium, but they would give it to them for free. That's a value of $20,000, or close to $100,000 in today's money. Free hotel rooms on New Year's weekend. That's quite the apology. And Texas was so upset about this, that even though the Marriott tried everything in their power to make it up to them to make it right, they declined and decided that they were going to stay somewhere else, paying out of pocket to do so. Said Athletic Director Daryl Royal, We called them two weeks before anyone else did, and they called us after each win and congratulated us and said they were looking forward to having us. Bill Ellington, one of Royal's assistants, said on the Marriott, They just kicked us out. That's all it boils down to. We know what happened. Their corporate big wheels put pressure on them to put Notre Dame in there. And when I say that the Marriott really tried everything in their power to make it up to Texas, I truly mean it. Because J.W. Marriott Jr., the head of the chain, flew down to Austin to issue a personal apology to everyone for what happened. As Marriott said, I have apologized personally to athletic director Daryl Royal for my company's unfortunate handling of lodging arrangements for the Texas Longhorns at the Cotton Bowl time. It all comes down to a poor decision on our part. I have had a thorough investigation conducted on the whole affair, and it's easy to see why the Longhorns expected that we would be their host hotel. I would have felt the same way. I also would have been just as upset when the situation was suddenly changed. I am truly distressed, and also extend my apologies on behalf of my company and my family to Coach Akers and the Longhorn team, to everyone connected in any way with the University of Texas, and to Texans everywhere. I made a special trip to Austin to express my deep regrets over this incident. I told Coach Royal that we made a bad call. In a most gracious and hospitable spirit, Coach Royal accepted my apology. So this seemed to be water under the bridge. However, remember that old John Madden saying about getting ready for the Super Bowl? or any big game for that matter, when he said something along the lines of the team that complains loses the game? In other words, the moment you focus on drama involving external factors, you've already lost? Well, that definitely applies here, because when it was time to play the Cotton Bowl, as you can tell, the Longhorns got decimated and lost to the Fighting Irish by a final score of 38-10. to This game was ugly with a capital U, as nothing whatsoever went right for the Longhorns. Whereas Notre Dame averaged nearly 5 yards per carry and picked up 243 yards on the ground, with multiple players on the Fighting Irish having at least 100 yards rushing, Texas was held to just 2.6 yards per carry. Texas lost 3 fumbles, threw 3 interceptions, lost the turnover battle by 5, and got outscored 14-0 in the second half, never leading at any point in the contest. Just like that, Texas dropped from number one to number four, and could not win the championship. And all their trouble in this game started with, of all things, a problem with a hotel chain. Because in 1977, 
not only did Texas lose to Notre Dame on the field, but they lost to them off the field when it came to hotel accommodations. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.